Hey, uh, so this is a quick demonstration of some custom components I wrote to allow um, reading uh, from and writing to Microsoft Excel from Grasshopper. Um, all this stuff is available. You can download the components from my website, henrygrossman.com, under design research and tutorials. Uh, there's a link to this video um, as well as the components for download. Um, so what you need to have, first of all, is you need to have Microsoft Excel up and running. Um, and so I've got that here uh, with a test file that I made for this demonstration, which is also available in that, that download package. Um, and then here in Rhino, I've opened up Grasshopper and I've opened up the read Excel uh, file um, and they all basically work the same way. Um, I've packaged them into six different types of components for reading and writing in different ways so that you never have to edit the Visual Basic code. Um, the first set of two are for reading individual values um, and all of, all of these, uh, these six are all in uh, three sets of two, one for reading and writing in columns and one for rows. So here, for example, in the read Excel column, you give it a row number and a column. Here, let's say 3B. Uh, and it will read out uh, six values starting in row 3B that you can then pipe directly into you know, whatever kind of uh, uh, parameter is appropriate. So if you look over here in our Excel file, um, in uh, here's row three, column B, monkeys, pigs, orangutans, gorillas, cows. Uh, and so value A is row three B, and it continues down, and if there's nothing to read, it gives you a null. Um, and so that just reads in a column. Um, read Excel row does the same thing. Here we're saying three B, uh, and it, except it reads across. So here, starting in 3B, monkeys, vermilion, 54, right? we're just reading out single values. Um, you know, of course, if we change either of these, if we say, you know, um, let's go to column A, row 1. Right now we're reading apples, dogs, red, 4. Apples, dogs, red, 4. Um, so one thing to note is that this will always read from the currently open worksheet. Uh, so here, Apple's Dogs Red 4, that's what's on worksheet 1. I've set up a worksheet, worksheet 2, that has different sets of values. Prickly Pear, Tigers, Green, 83. Um, if we come back uh, and hit the spacebar and recompute, you'll see that now it's reading from worksheet 2, which is the currently open worksheet up here as well, bears, wolves, wolverines. It's just, you know, for amusement, set that to C1. Now we're reading column C, green, olive, tote, etc. Green, olive, tote. Um, so that's how it works. Um, this is a handy component for essentially setting up a set of parameters uh, that you want to read, you know, the single items out of Excel. Um, down here is a version that will read a list um, and keep reading until it encounters a, uh, a null value. So if we set this up to start at, say, row one, column A, um, should we hit recompute? Um, you'll see that uh, this just gives you the first value, and this gives you the value list up until the end. Prickly pear, peaches, tangerines, etc., all the way down to kiwis. If we go back here and we add another fruit to the list, like uh, uh, apples, um, make sure, by the way, if you add something like uh, blueberries, if you don't hit return, uh, you'll come back here and you'll try to recompute and it'll kind of hang uh, because Grasshopper can't take control of Excel. So you need to make sure you hit return, you're out of the cell.
And when you come back here, you can see now it's reading all the way down the list until it gets to a null value. Um, and again, if we change back to worksheet one, recompute, now it's reading worksheet one. Um, so that's the, uh, that reads in a column, and then the, its sort of sister component over here uh, will read across a row, apples, dogs, red, four. Maybe we set that down to row four. Right. Now it's reading grapes, pigs, violet, 20, uh, 127. Right. Row four, grapes, pigs, violet, 127. And this works the same way. Uh, I'll come back and recompute. Right. It just keeps reading across until it encounters a null value. Um, so that's how you read from Excel into Grasshopper. Um, these last two components uh, are useful for writing from Grasshopper back to Excel. So if you extract some information from your Grasshopper definition and you want to write it back so that you can save it or use it, um, these components will help you do that. And similarly, the exact same format in terms of one for column reading and one for row reading. The only thing that's different here is that they have this uh, Boolean toggle. Um, and it won't write uh, unless this is set to true. And that's just so that you don't accidentally overwrite stuff you didn't want to overwrite. So over here, I created a series of numbers, you know, counting from uh, 0 to 38 by twos. Um, uh, and that gets uh, uh, piped into the write list. And just like before, this will tell me, you know, this is going to start writing at row one, column F. So if I click that from uh, false over to true, and I come back, right now in row one, column F, I've written my values. Um, similarly, let me turn that to false. Um, if I do the same, this is going to write, let's say, from, I don't know, row two, column G. Uh, true. Sometimes I like to just click it over to true and back to false so I know that I don't ever leave it in the on and writing position. So here it's written across 0, 2, 4, 6, uh, you know, etc. Um, so that's how those work. The one thing to watch out for is let's say we make fewer values here. You know, so now we're counting by fives, you know, uh, 0, 5, 10. Um, and we write into that same column position. Um, and I go back. You can see it's going 0, 5, 10, etc. But it doesn't overwrite our old values that were here. It just doesn't know how to do that. So sometimes you just have to manually delete that stuff. Come back. True, false. Right. And uh, and now it's now it just is writing them down. So if I wanted to read those back in, right, 0, 5, 10, that's starting at F1, you know, I could go back up to my uh, read list column, set that to F1. Oops. What's wrong? Okay, temporary glitch there, uh, but uh, I admit I cheated. I had to uh, stop the recording and go back and tweak something in the code, but it works now. Um, so if I set this row to be 1, column to be F, um, you can see it's now reading back that set of values that we just wrote, uh, that we just wrote before from, um, from our, uh, our write components. And I could do the same thing. If I want to read across uh, these values that I had written starting in G2. Let's change that row to 2. Changes to G. All right, you can see now 
right, that just reads uh, into one list, um, you know, until it reaches a null. And you know, when this reads them, finally, you know, they're, they're strings. But all you have to do to convert them into usable numbers is to just put them into a number parameter. Um, and there you go. That's totally usable grasshopper information. Um, so if you wanted to do something like uh, mass addition, yeah. uh, that works. Um, so there'll be uh, a parts two and three uh, to this tutorial where I actually use these components to drive a parametric massing and to get some data out of it. Um, and those will also be linked to from the website www.henrygrossman.com.